The San Francisco 49ers hit the road again this week. Midwest again. Maybe it will go better than it did last week. Moody! 49ers lick their wounds and head to Minnesota, who ain't dead yet. In fact, they feel happy, thinking about going for a walk, actually. That one is lofted in the air, and it's intercepted! It may not have been pretty, but we've all seen those ugly dogs win that award, right? They're still wearing the sash and laughing all the way to the canine bank, if you will. Looking in zone, caught! Touchdown! It's the rookie, Jordan Addison! No JJ, no problem. Just crank some Creed and everything's good, I guess. Kirk Cousins did just enough, throwing passes to guys with arms wide open. And their defense, three takeaways. It was like Chicago's own prison out there last week. Pressure coming here, and the ball is out! Down the sideline! Vikings players treated to some higher by Creed pregame ahead of their Week 6 clash with the Bears. Minnesota players like, dang, Kirk, you didn't seem like a cat down with the 420 funny okay we see you he's like no that's not what he's singing about you know you know what screw it maybe it does mean that whatever it takes to fire everyone up and it seemed to fire up the defense at least Bajan lets it fly but it's a duck and it's intercepted Byron Murphy picked it off they dominated Justin Fields before he left hurt and he had been on fire the previous two games and they held the Bears offense which had averaged over 30 points per game in their last two to 13 points you see Josh Metellus getting home again. That's what he's so good at. Now they see what they can do versus Brock Purdy and who? He saw Debo and CMC leave hurt last week. Clearly, they topped the injury watch list in this matchup. Christian McCaffrey is headed to the locker room. Sprinting, but again, 49ers need him right now. The BCB man's confidence deflated without them. Purdy comes in off his worst NFL start, 125 yards, only 4.6 yards per attempt, a rating under 60, one touchdown, one pick. Purdy slings it, intercepted! Three for 13 on third down. Purdy now has to try and do something he's never had to attempt before, start a game after losing an NFL regular season game. Owusu Koromoa got enough depth that he's able to elevate that ball and he just is able to get his hands on it. And Purdy's lucky that wasn't a pick. To rebound, he's gonna have to beat the blitz and with it, Daniil the QB Hunter. No team blitzes more than Minnesota. Hunter had two sacks last week. He would now star on the Ocho for the number of bags he's collected for the season. It is a sack. He now has seven of the 15 sacks this year for the Minnesota Vikings. Ouch town population you, bro. So which Purdy shows up? The one with a plus 100 rate versus five plus pass rushers for 2023? Or the one that didn't crack a 60 rate versus five plus versus Cleveland last week? Here's Purdy to throw, he's in pressure. He is, he throws it away and it's incomplete. 49ers need consistency from George Kittle. He goes from three TDs one week to one catch for one yard. This was supposed to be a little seam go route by Kittle and I think this ball just comes out of his hand. He just loses it to the boundary. That's four Greg Kittle games for him in 2023. If there's no Debo, Kittle and Brandon Ayuk become the focus for Minnesota's secondary. They held DJ Moore, who went for 230 plus the week before, to 51 yards last week. Ayuk could see a lot of cornerback Byron Murphy, who's having a great year for the Vikes. Sub 90 rating allowed, only one guy has more than his seven passes defense. And that pass, no. Byron Murphy there defensively. 49ers rush attack could be in the hands of Jordan Mason if CMC is out. That's not a terrible thing. Over five yards per carry in his last two games, 15 attempts. To Mason, good blocking left side, cuts up the field, flying towards the end zone, he's in! McCaffrey being available would make things more problematic, obviously, but it should be noted, under four yards per carry before he got hurt last week, under four a run the week before versus Dallas. Teams that are both tough on running backs, and Minnesota's is as well, holding them to 3.7 a carry. Well, they'll keep it on the ground. Evans fumbled it, but the Bears able to recover. 49ers faithful, empire, nation, collective. I don't know, I can't keep up anymore. But their fans all thinking, it took us losing our best player, a top receiver, a random missed field goal, and a lot of help from, not to single them out, because we're not supposed to make anyone feel bad, but with a lot of help from Marty and his pals from Madagascar. I didn't see a ton of contact. Obviously, officials saw it different, and right now, these penalties are killing San Francisco. Marty's the zebra, by the way, in case you didn't pick up on that. 
Scoring on San Francisco is still going to take work. They didn't have any issues with P.J. Walker. No touchdowns. Picked him off twice. They have great numbers against QBs across the board. He's one of the best coverage linebackers in the NFL. Potential defensive player of the year candidate. At the same time, they did give up over 100 yards to Amari Cooper. It doesn't fit with how they've handled wide receivers in 2023, but it did happen. Here's Walker. He has some time. Got to loft it up. Cooper's wide open. He's got it. Makes the move. Cooper, foot race. Normally, this is the moment we'd be like, oh snap, here comes JJ, but alas, he can only clap from the sidelines, which is where he'll be again this week. Rooting on Cousins, who had to grind without him, didn't throw any INTs, one TD at least. Cousins over the middle, and he's able to find Osborne. Still, 5.8 yards per attempt, only 181 yards passing. San Francisco is facing a passing attack that's a shell of its JJ self. Rookie Jordan Addison caught Cousins' touchdown, not much else. K.J. Osborne, 48 yards. Tight end T.J. Hawkinson, 50. He led the team in catches and targets. Just kind of gets his feet in the ground, and that's what makes T.J. Hawkinson so dangerous. He's so quick out of those breaks. Cousins should expect pressure. 49ers pressure rate, one of the highest in the game. Newcomer Randy Gregory nabbed his first sack as a 49er versus the Browns. Nick Bosa picked up his second. Blitz is coming. Walker in trouble, and he's sacked. Nick Bosa! The 49ers don't blitz a ton. It's mainly their front four. So just how does Cousins handle pressure? Well, check it out. He has seven touchdowns against it, most of any quarterback in the NFL, one of the best rates against it. Fires to the end zone to Jefferson. Touchdown! Yeah, those digits were with Jefferson on the field for five games. When Minnesota tokes it, Alexander Madison, 44 yards, 2.4 a carry versus the Bears. So what does Captain Kirk rock this week to fire the troops up? Little Nickelback maybe, cause we all wanna be big rock stars, driving cars and stuff. And San Francisco saw the Browns experience a joyous conclusion to their football game without their starting quarterback, by the way. Is that okay? I cannot be held accountable for others' interpretation of the English language. Get your minds out of the gutter maybe. And maybe into the comments section so you can tell everyone who will be happy with the ending of the game.